Hi everyone, my name is Jeremy Dalton. I take care of the virtual reality and augmented reality team for PwC UK. And glad to be joining you here today at EWTS, where I'll be running you through a number of analyses that we've conducted over the years, including one that we are releasing just today for you all here at EWTS. Back in 2017, we analyzed the XR startup ecosystem in the UK. And we looked at almost 500 startups in this area. Uh, we analyzed them by how, how mature they were. We looked at them in terms of whether they're content providers, service providers, um, or technology companies. And we also looked at a little bit of the, the VC funding side as well. Now, that was very much about the supply side of things. So the startup market, the vendors, who is actually providing this XR technology. But what we wanted to look at after that is the demand side, which is arguably even more important because that tells us what organizations want from XR technology. And so yesterday, you would have heard from Andrea Maurer, and she would have spoke to you about a study that PwC conducted around the value of soft skills training using virtual reality technology. So I won't repeat what she said, but I'll give you the highlights from that talk, and you can, you can see the recording if you want to check out the details. But ultimately, we found that virtual reality can be better, faster, and cheaper at scale than traditional training methods. Specifically, we found that it can be up to four times faster to train in virtual reality than in the classroom. It can lead to 275% greater confidence for users to apply what they've learned using virtual reality uh, after their training. A 3.75 times higher emotional connection to the training content when using virtual reality. A four times greater focus um, in VR than they had in e-learning. And then finally at scale, so at the level of 3,000 learners in our particular example, we found that virtual reality was actually 52% more cost effective than classroom training. Now, both of those studies looked at XR from a micro perspective, so a very particular niche perspective, whether that was soft skills training or whether that was XR startups in the UK alone. What we wanted to understand is from a macro perspective, a, a wider perspective, what is the value of XR technology? And so we started to talk to our economists in the UK firm, and we wanted to understand what impact is XR technology going to have on the global economy? And what we found out is that XR has the potential to boost GDP globally by 2030 by up to one and a half trillion dollars. And that amount is composed of these five buckets here presented to you in decreasing order from left to right uh, of application area. So product and service development on the left-hand side, contributing almost $360 billion to the global economy by 2030. And that is to do with organizational meetings, remote collaboration, the design and visualization of assets, flexible working, things like that. The next big bucket, $351 billion, this is to do with healthcare-related solutions, also including the, the training of surgeons aspect, but as well as that, the ability to perform surgeries in a much more uh, in a much more impactful way, a much more effective way, where that information is presented to you um, in a fashion that allows you to conduct that surgery effectively. Next up, something that we've heard a lot of, and in particular the soft skills training report, two hundred ninety four billion dollars of contribution here, and that speaks for itself. You, you will have heard more about that in our soft skills study. Process improvements, how do we improve processes mainly through augmented reality and understand how to use devices and machinery, how to map different locations, and then finally the retail and consumer market, uh, how do we enhance existing retail processes, how do we enhance sales, consumer experiences, and of course the contribution of the video gaming market, which we hear a lot about in the media. In this report, which we called Seeing is Believing, uh, we also looked at the different expectations between virtual reality and augmented reality. And you can see the results here. So back in 2019, when this report was released, uh, virtual reality and augmented reality were much closer in terms of their expected contribution than they're expected to be in 2030. 
by 2030, we expect augmented reality to contribute more than double that of virtual reality technology to the global economy. And that is understandable when you consider that the technology to produce high-end augmented reality applications is very quickly and rapidly becoming a technology that is in our pockets by default. It is augmented reality technology is also one that is related to applications in the real world of which there are many compared to virtual reality, which takes its applications from being able to simulate virtual environments. Now, that's not to say that AR is better than VR in any way. That's not what this graph is saying. Um, they are two very different technologies with different use cases. And it's important to remember that in context with these numbers. We then drew a global picture together in terms of the map that you can see here, which analyzed a few countries to help understand how those individual nations in terms of their expected adoption of XR technology contributing to the boost in GDP that we saw earlier. And as a high level summary of this, of this map here, we've got the US leading the way with more than half a trillion dollars of contribution expected by 2030, followed by East Asia with China and Japan, and then Europe with nations like the UK, Germany, and France. We don't only expect XR technology to contribute to the economy in terms of a GDP boost, but we also expect it to contribute in terms of the number of jobs that would be enhanced by the use of this technology, of which we expect there to be just over 23 million of them by 2030. So that economic analysis was looking at the potential future of virtual reality. It was trying to understand what could happen by 2030 with the expected uptake and adoption of this technology and its contribution to the global economy. But what we also wanted to understand is what is happening right now? What is the present state of the market? And to do that, we started to look at industry. So in this analysis, which we, have, we haven't mentioned at all before, so you are the first people in the world to hear about it, we analyzed XR in industry. So in particular, looking at it from the perspective of what organizations are using the technology. We started with UK and US businesses, and we analyzed over 7.2 million of them to understand who is using XR technology right now and how are they using it, where are they using it. So we analyzed the websites of these companies. We looked at their news that they were pushing out. We looked at their social media accounts and, and scraped a lot of data off the internet and connected every piece of data we could find to either an industry, a geography, uh, the technology, VRAR, or a use case or application, in other words. And um, from a technology perspective, you've got virtual reality or augmented reality. From a geography perspective, in the UK, we analyzed it by region, and the regions are listed here. Uh, there aren't as many uh, regions in the UK as there are US states. So we were able to, to list them all, but we did also analyze every US state as well. So we have that data uh, ready to be accessed and we'll talk about that in a second. From an industry perspective, the industries you see listed here on this slide in the third column there, those are the industries that we decided to, to use as categorization for this analysis. And then finally on the right hand, right hand most column, we have the use case or application. In other words, when we consider um, how XR was being used, this is what we mean. Was it used from the perspective of an entertainment application? Was it used as a training tool or an L&D tool? Was it used to improve processes? Was it used to engage with consumers? That is what this rightmost use case bucket is all about. So a little bit about the more detailed aspects of the results. From a technology perspective, we found that virtual reality currently accounts for the majority of XR applications in both the UK and the US. So, and they have pretty similar results. Uh, the UK adoption, which we're seeing almost 66% related to, to virtual reality and 34% related to augmented reality, with the US adoption showing about 63% virtual reality, 37% augmented reality. And, and that's interesting and perhaps to be expected given the level of maturity currently with regard to virtual reality versus augmented reality technology. And the fact that 
a lot of organizations are pushing publicly available information about their virtual reality initiatives. From a regional analysis perspective, when we conducted this analysis and we scraped all of that data and we brought it together, we found that there were 1,550 applications of uh, virtual reality or augmented reality in the UK and almost 2,200 in the US. Now, it's important to remember that those are not numbers for unique companies. Those are applications of which a single company could have multiple applications of virtual reality or augmented reality technology. Uh, but just anecdotally, I've seen the data. We're not talking about many here. Uh, we're talking about um, uh, you know, a, a handful of companies or a small percentage of companies, I should say, uh, where there are multiple use cases within the company itself or multiple applications of VR and AR technology together. But you'll be able to dig into that data yourself and, and see the detail of that. Um, from a regional trend perspective, in the UK, we found that London contains about a third of all the, the, the virtual reality or augmented reality applications um, across the UK. And um, equivalently, we found that uh, California accounts for about a third of these applications as well in the US. You can see details here on the pie charts of uh, the different regions across the US and the UK. I won't go into too much detail there. You'll see some, some hard hitters just behind California. We've got New York State at 20% nearly, um, and then it drops a little bit. We've got Florida uh, and Texas coming in at around 10% um, uh, as well, um, and Illinois and so on. But these, the, you're not seeing all US states on this pie chart here. We're only showing those where the adoption of XR technology is greater than 4%, but the full data set is available for you to peruse. So in terms of the industry adoption of, uh, of virtual reality and augmented reality technology, we found interesting results uh, across the, the UK and the US. In the UK, engineering and manufacturing is the top industry using the technology. So in the UK, you've got 24% of the uh, of the applications we've analyzed belong to the engineering and manufacturing industry. Uh, in the US, engineering and manufacturing is also top, but it's 19%, so perhaps a bit more spread out uh, across different industries there. Uh, going back to the UK, we have retail and consumer coming second, but second by quite a long way. So dropping down from 24 in engineering and manufacturing to 11 in the retail and consumer market uh, very closely net in third place is professional services. Uh, and then finally, sports and leisure and healthcare. And in the US, um, it is closer together as well, uh, going down only a little bit, only about 6% to technology as an industry. Um, so dropping to 13% for technology uh, usage of XR, 12% almost for healthcare usage, and close to 10 or 11% for professional services and retail cons and consumer as adopters of XR technology. Now, this is interesting from the perspective of uh, engineering and manufacturing have been using virtual reality and augmented reality for a long time now. If you look back, you can find many examples that date back to the early 2000s of engineering and manufacturing companies uh, that are using VR or AR technology, uh, mostly VR back then, but places like, um, well, there'd be many automotive companies in particular that are subsections of that industry, uh, which provide good examples there. So here we looked at the applications of XR or the use case around it. Now from, as a high level perspective, the top three industries across the UK and the US were actually the same, but in different orders. So in the UK, retail and consumer engagement coming first, learning and development second, entertainment and leisure third. In the US, it's actually L&D that takes first place, followed by retail and consumer, uh, is consumer engagement, and then entertainment and leisure. So in the UK, retail and consumer engagement accounts for 38%, uh, pretty significant um, in terms of uh, application there. And in the US, learning and development is coming in at 
24.8%. So pretty much a, a quarter of all the applications that we're looking at across the US are learning and development related, uh, which is great to see. Uh, and it, it shows the validity of us performing the soft skills uh, in virtual reality effectiveness exercise that you, you heard from earlier or in Andrea's talk yesterday. And um, this is interesting because L&D is clearly an important area, but entertainment and leisure is very well publicized um, and very well understood by the public. And given the fact that this data relies on uh, publicly available data, then it's, it's understandable that we see entertainment and, and leisure making it into the top three, learning and development from the perspective of organizations that are, are trying to show themselves as being very innovative companies, um, improving their L&D programs by using cutting edge technology like virtual reality. And then finally, from a retail and consumer engagement, uh, I would think that it's a pretty similar story there in terms of uh, marketing activities and trying to uh, get the attention of consumers. And it's very easy to use emerging technologies like virtual reality and augmented reality to come up with an exciting story or an exciting way of engaging with consumers, which is why we see it there uh, in both the UK and US top three industry users of XR technology. So I've spoken for a bit about uh, our findings in various reports, including our latest one, XR and industry analysis. Now, if you'd like to see details of that, we currently have the UK map available, and you can check that out at pwc.co.uk slash XR and industry. Uh, if anyone's interested in reading more about the Seeing is Believing report, this is the economic analysis, uh, you can go to pwc.com slash seeing is believing. Um, for the XR and industry analysis, we're actually interested in in you contributing if you'd like. So you, if you think there is a company out there that we may not have considered in this analysis, or you want to make sure that such examples are considered in the analysis, what you've seen is just a snapshot in time of the current state of the data that we've managed to scrape so far. If you, if you want to contribute to this, you're more than welcome to submit uh, companies that are either your own companies uh, or, or your clients or examples that you've seen on the internet from uh, could be speakers at, at this conference, could be examples you've heard of from elsewhere, but we'd be more than happy uh, to hear about those and include them in further updates as we go on. So you can find that form right at the bottom of the page on pwc.co.uk slash XR and industry. If you'd like us to keep you up to date in terms of whenever we release an update to the map that you've seen and you want to subscribe to those and get more in-depth details, just email gbl underscore XR industry map at pwc.com. The email is there in the, the third box. And um, finally, you can join me for a, a live Q&A in the PwC booth. Um, I'll be hanging around uh, until 10 a.m. Uh, PST. And uh, thank you all for listening. It's been a real pleasure and I look forward to to taking your questions, uh, engaging with you further on these findings, and ultimately contributing more analyses about the value of XR technology in business across the globe.